Troy Galloway is a construction manager and consultant, commercial and residential builder, and a certified inspector for all commercial and residential buildings. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Welcome back, folks, to About the House. This is your audio university on everything you could ever possibly ever want to know or need to know about your home. What makes it so great is it's like an encyclopedia. You could continue to go back and check our podcast out. I got people contacting me. Hey, Troy, he said, when are you going to get back on? When are you going to have another show? Uh, So I know that y'all out there listening. I'm pretty excited about that. And I even get now I'm getting folks that we've been doing this for so long now. Uh, What I think we got like 50 some shows or something out there. Is that right, uh, Joey? Uh, 52 shows. Uh, Joey's the producer. I always like to brag about him. He's an outstanding young man. And uh, now he, that cost him a few bucks to tell me that. But hey, all jokes aside here, let's just keep on moving. Uh, this is about the house. And they, you know, this show, I just really do love doing this. It's just so educational. And I was just talking to Joey just a few minutes ago. You know, I think what I really enjoy most about this show, not as, not just, you know, getting this information out to you, but how much every time I do any of this, these shows, I do my research. Even though I've been in construction now for 42 years, well, it looks like maybe be pushing 43 pretty quick, is that there's just so much information out there, and it just continues to learn and grow, and I just love sharing it with you, and uh, so it also helps me when I teach our classes at the college, you know, construction building classes, building science classes, so hey, This show is just like my company, Galloway Building Services. Galloway Building Services is very unique, just like our show about the house. We actually, we do home and building inspections. Yes, a lot of companies do home and building inspections. But what makes us more unique, Galloway Building Services more unique, is that not only do we do that, but we do construction inspections. We do expert witnessing. We're not, we're registered in the state of Missouri as a construction expert witness. You ever have any conflict on your project or you want to make sure your house is being done right or your remodeling project's being done right, we are getting tons of more people calling us all the time wanting to hire us to help them. Make sure that you are getting what you paid for. You're not getting ripped off and the job is being done right. And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but more importantly, isn't peace of mind worth it? So give us a call Galloway building services and phone number. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the office number 636-394-3112. Now, you tell me, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you my cell phone number. Don't pass this one out because we don't need everybody in town calling me. Uh, but if you listen to this show, you're, you are special. So we want to make sure you can get straight to me and that phone number. My personal fo- cell phone is 314-520-6655. All righty, folks. Well, let's just jump right back into this show here. We are on part two of exterior siding. We touched base on all kinds of things last show, and we was talking about this masonry, siding, and stucco, uh, aphis, uh, you know, stone, all kinds of different types of that type of material, and uh, which is uh, really great stuff and great information. So I highly encourage you to listen to this first part one, and now we're going to jump in here to part two. And now what we're going to do on part two is we're going to be doing using and talking Talking more about the different types of siding that, well, that's mostly used that we all have on our homes. Not everybody's got stucco. Not every guy's got ephus, but you know uh, that. But it was informational to know. But we're going to focus today, and we're going to focus on what is the most common types of siding. And they basically now this is not all, but the basic common types are wood, aluminum, and vinyl. Them are the three major ones that we see. And yeah, we still do have some aluminum out there. And we're going to talk about aluminum. And I, as, I, as a builder myself and as a hands-on, I started out in construction. Just like, well, in my day, if you want to, was I putting myself through college to get my building engineering degree? 
I was work construction and in my day you had to get out there and you had to start doing it the hard way. You had to start humping the lumber before you could measure the lumber, before you could cut the lumber, before you could start putting it together. So siding was one of the things that I have been really involved in a lot and have hung miles and mi- literally miles of different types of siding. So let's just jump right in here and let's talk, you know, let's talk about the different sightings. You know, it used to be before World War II, wooden siding was the primary type that was used for homes, naturally. But today, vinyl is really the most popular choice. And uh, what I was reading, which I didn't quite realize this because this was, you know, my research that I did on the siding was uh, national and it's 80%. Vinyl has 80% of the market share. And I I was flabbergasted and we're going, when we get into some vinyl, I'm going to tell tell you some of the stories we had. Yeah. It'll it hilarious. Anyway. So, uh, but 80% then aluminum is, was really common before vinyl was. And, uh, it's still now we don't use as much aluminum siding as we used to different areas would have it, but we use a lot of that in trim, uh, like our soffit and our fascia, things like that, or to wrap around our windows where the guys come out there at the, you remember the machines you see, you know, the metal, we call them metal brakes. They bend the machine, the, the, the metal. Oh, I do love that too. You got to really got to be on your toes to be smart enough to use a brake. Ah, the the bend the metal, but we're going to be basically focused on the not on trim so much right now. It's we're just going to stay focused just on the siding. But I wanted to touch base with you on that, so we'll just jump right in here if, and we we'll go straight to wood. The wood siding is still one of the most popular of the sidings, and there's so many reasons why uh, that is so great. Because and one for one, it's timeless. It has the classic look. And, um, you know, it's it makes homeowners feel secure and, and grounded in their homes. You know, if you, especially folks that believe in it, you know, being grounded. Because wood is just, it's it's easy to work with. And, uh, you know, it's easy, it's easy to repair. But it has its issues. And we're going to talk about that here. Um, and one of the big reasons people still like wood is the installation cost. You know, you can install it yourself relatively easy if you know how to run a saw and a tape measure. It doesn't take a whole lot to do it, and it's also cheaper for your carpenters. It also really is, uh, it's, if you end green building, well, honestly, trees regrow. They are a renewable energy source. And, of course, some trees take longer than others, and we're going to talk about some of them, different types of siding. But it's biodegradable, you know, not just is it recyclable. So there's just a lot of great things that we can do with this. Uh, you know, and, and with your wood siding, you can paint it any color you want. Uh, and of course, you, you do have to seal it. So you either seal it with paint uh, you can seal it with stain. We we need to talk about that in the future of the different types of staining and paint material. And I'm hoping here in the next couple of shows that we're going to have a paint company coming on. And they're going to be talking more about the different styles out there and the, all kinds of new things that are into painting. You know, when I got into this, I first thing that jumped out here is it said there are 17 different types of wood siding and styles for home exteriors. So, hey, don't worry. I'm not going to bore the tar out of you. We're not going to hit all 17. But we do want to hit a few of the major ones that we see a lot out here. Ones that, uh, that way, when you do have these brought to your attention, you kind of have a better working idea of what you have. So, the first one I want to move into is the most common type of our siding, and that's pine. And it's a softwood it does last a real long time. Pine siding last, lasts a good long time, and it holds a finish very well. And, you know, it doesn't take a lot to paint it or keep it sealed and caught. But, you know, it's a, it's a good economical system, 
you know, with our, that we do like to use and it's good for the, you know, it's safe for everybody, meaning safe. You're going to kind of hear about some of the hazards of some of the others that are, you know, there's kind of hazardous to your health of some of the other different types of products out there. Like I said, it's easy to repair or replace. One of the problems that using pine for your siding, as it's really difficult to find long lengths of pine that is free of knots 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 are them little i think they're really pretty but knots are really where limb wood comes out we'll talk about that with some other and uh, and other well you go back we talked about engineered lumber and such knots are not part of engineered lumber but knots fall out and you notice on our old pine siding yeah if them knots if they're loose they will literally well you see sometimes you'll see wood siding that's got like holes in it not from woodpeckers or from squirrels because they go through anything but the that you'll see where the knots really literally fall out now when we had our rue come on here first choice painting he talked a little bit about the ceiling of that back in my day when we used to use a lot of wood siding and pine in particular we would literally take two coats of shellac to go over every knot before we painted them and that would help seal it give it an extra sealant but that was a good way of taking care of it you know, another way, another problem that we find with si- uh, pine siding, not just the long links that are clean, clear, but it's, it's not resistant to rot. So if you got a moisture issue and, you know, then you got termite issues, well, uh, sadly, termites love pine. You know, and so I mean, great termite food. So, you you know, you, that that's one of the drawbacks with it. So I want you to, you know, think about that uh, and, you know, it, and make a note here. Make a note because this is I made a note to make sure I shared this with you folks too. make sure that when you choose your pine wood that you don't get any what they call fast growing pine. Now, that's where we got our pine trees down here that, you know, pine forest and farms that we see around the country. The fat, because it has a tendency for checking, checking, uh, you, you, you'll see it, you, wood's checked up, cupping, and even splitting. So that is one of the drawbacks with pine. But like I said, if it gets bad, you can get it replaced. So, you know, think about that. So well, the next one is really one of my favorites. Uh, you know, of course, I love all the wood sightings. I'm a naturalist, so I, I do love them. But that's fur. And fur. Yeah, we've used fur not just in our exterior, but we in, in the older parts of town uh, uh, in the Midwest have a lot of fur, not just in, outside the house, but inside the house for our floor joists and things. But fur is a great softwood option, and it also can save you a fair amount of money the same way pine can. But unlike pine, you can get long links. You don't want a bunch of seams where you butt the joints up because when you do that they're more open for areas of moisture penetration so naturally the longer the piece that you can get it helps with any kind of moisture issues okay so let's move here fur is also easy to install just like pine it's lightweight so you can pick it up and, and, and hold it and, and install it yourself. It's economical, and it, it really does hold a finish real well. So I think you really will enjoy using it. Um, because it is a soft wood, it's easy to mill, and they put different kind of patterns in it and it to make it look, you know, so they can make it look like a rough sawn or whatever, you know. And they use it for all kinds of different types of trim also, you know. So that's a really a neat reason to use it. And people love it because it is attractive. Even the grain in the wood is pretty. You know, it, it, it does it. Some wood's got really pretty wood, grain, some's not. And it's it's barely not, I'm not going to say it's not free, a K-N-O-T, but it is have a, it does have a lot less than your normal uh, pine does. Now, let's move over to another of the members of the pine family, and that's spruce. Now, spruce is also like it is a pine family, so it definitely is a softwood, but boy, it does look good once it's installed. And 
it won't cause you to go over budget when you're having to replace it. So think about spruce. Spruce is often a substitute for pine when pine's not available uh, because we have a lot of spruce farms out there. So spruce is an awesome material for us to be trying to use out there. It's not rot-resistant either. So, you know, that is one of the drawbacks. Uh, and, you know, and it, and it does become affected with insects, you know, from just like uh, the others, uh, carpenter bees, termites, you know. And because of it, it kind of has a tendency to be, if it gets wet, it's kind of like a sponge. So it takes a little bit more for it to dry out. It's not as water retardant. Now, we want to talk about a little retardant wood, water retardant wood. Let's talk about our redwoods. Oh, my redwood. We all know about our beautiful redwood trees. Yeah, you know, they're, 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 they take a long time to grow. They're very beautiful. They can be used in about any climate without any problems whatsoever, whether it be cold or Midwestern weather where we have everything or, or deep south where we have a lot of hot weather. And it's really easy to tell because it's got a beautiful, rich tone and texture. And additionally, since redwood is a resistant to shrinking, you don't have the same kind of worries that you have with the other woods where it'd be cupping or warping. So redwood, you know, and it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you more than the others. But wow, you know, it, but it does add value to the home, at least as what the documents or what we see from real estate agents tell you that it can add value. And so when you spend that little extra money, you're going to be able to have peace of mind that it's not going to wear out as quickly. It's more water retardant, it, beautiful. You know, it's just a win-win. Um, when we get into a deck section, we're going to talk about that too, because you also use redwoods for our decks, not very often, because it does cost you know, a little bit more. And uh, there's very little pitch in it. So that means, because of the pitch, means that it has a better job of absorbing and retaining your finish. And so just think about that when you're doing it. And, and you can usually find redwood, in about any parts of the United States, but it's mostly available naturally west of the United States. And uh, because of, you know, it's because it is expensive because of shipping. So if you're on the western side of our country, you can find it a lot easier and a lot more economical. My people that are listening to you, I know we got folks in California, Oregon. We got folks listening to this show now in, in Florida, up and through the East Coast. So my East Coast brothers and sisters and brothers, you're not going to be able to find it as easy. But if you can, it's worth it. All right, so let's move over to the other type of weather or water-resistant type of wood. And which we see a lot on decks. Primarily, we see this on decks, and that is cedar. Oh, I do love this cedar, and it so smells so good, don't it? You know, you don't have. You, we even have cedar closets. Are you remember? At least some of you older folks remember. We used to always line our closets because of the uh, of, of, cedar, of cedar line closets and our old chest, closed chest because of our wool and clothes and moths well that's not so much of an issue on the exterior but it definitely is a thing that will help you have a little bit longer lifespan of your material and it, it it's very oh it's just beautiful and it's probably one of the favorites of the water retardant of the wooden siding because of, of the look the gorgeous grain it can be you know what and you stain i, I know I hate to see you paint either redwood, and I hate to see you paint uh, cedar, but I know you do. I know it happens. I know sometimes we have to, but put stain on it. There's some fabulous stains on it out there, and uh, just check out some of our other shows now and in the future because we're going to be talking about that kind of stuff as we go along, but stain it so you can see in both redwood and cedar the beauty of this, uh, uh, and you know... It takes a great, it really does take stain easy. It's a gorgeous material, but it's also rot resistant, meaning that it's a weather retardant, water retardant. 
And so the insects like carpenter bees don't eat it, don't like it as much. You know, but they do eat it. You see, I see a lot of carpenter's bees get into my decking and such, but it's not as much. And termites don't eat it as much, as fast as some of the others because they termite. Well, listen to listen to old No Buckingham uh, of our radio show we did a few months ago uh, about insects and uh, pest control. He's really expert, so I don't want to step on his shoe toes because I know he knows what he's talking about more than I do. But cedar. Cedar, not only is it used for, uh, we don't just use it just for our siding and our decks, but actually cedar shake. Cedar, we used to use a lot of. Now, it's it's also resistant because of the, it doesn't have as much pitch in it. It's resistant to cupping. It's resistant to swelling and splitting. And it's easy to work with. And it's a very forgiving wood. And you generally don't need to worry about the boards breaking or installing during installation. Like you do, like, you know, like a pine or fir does or spruce. So, and if you like the way red wood grain looks, then, and you can't afford the redwood or you don't have the redwood available, cedar's a great alternative to use. Now, Here's a good secret, and I'll pass uh, pass on to you. Take a minute, make a note of this. Try to get the heart of the cedar tree. That's that beautiful red part of the tree, the more of the center. That is the better of the wood. The more you have of that white of your wood, that is going to be your weaker part and that's going to he, cause you more issues try so try to and, and so you're just going to have to pay a little extra to try to get to higher quality and well now while, while cedar is resistant to moisture and insect damage it still has to be properly maintained just like redwood and you are you can run into major problems with your siding so regular sealing and painting is absolutely necessary and uh, it, so and, and you kind of really should power wash it when you do get ready to restain it uh, or refinish it now it's not when you initially put it up but anything like that you want to get that done don't let the mold or or, or or vegetation or anything grow up in it it can very it can cause you some problems so would cause you a lot of problems actually problem that oh we ought to talk about that sometime i think folks would love to hear about some of them horror stories but oh let's do so let's go to the cypress cypress now i i'm a big fan of cypress wood it's a hardwood it's very desirable for siding because it's so durable and uh, you know it's it's going to be a little more expensive but there again it's really worth your bang for your buck So this is, you know, in fact, cypress is what I like about cypress, in fact, is that it can be people salvage it from old homes, what they do. So when we're tearing down a home and you got old cypress wood, people gather that up. They use it for decorations. They use it for interior. Several of our multimillion dollar homes that we've built over the years, they bring in this cypress wood and uh, decorate their basements, their bars. So it's recyclable because of its long life. It's beautiful wood. It's rot. It's resistant to rot. It naturally re- oh, this is great. It naturally re- it repels insects. Uh, it, it, it's not going to keep them out guaranteed. It's not like oh, you put cypress up, you're not going to have any. But it does naturally have a repellent to all insects. But just like everything, like all wood, it needs to be attended to. You have to keep it sealed. But it's almost like a forever wood. Uh, that's how come you we're, we're tearing down houses with cypress still on it. So if you can get cypress and you have it in your budget that you want the beauty of the wood, you want the beauty of, of the staining or the painting, either or, but you want that wood look, clapboard look or Dutch lap look, this is it. Great for trims too. But now one of the problems that I hear that people run into when they're considering cypress is it's very difficult to mill. So combined with the expense, this difficulty is why you don't see of milling is why you don't see a lot of different patterns also out there that you can see with some of your other woods. It's easy. It's a little softer wood and uh, it does cost a little bit extra. So think about that. Now, well, we're that's of the last of the woods that we want to talk about is I want to talk about your engineer wood. 
engineer wood. Well, you know, we had a great segment on engineered lumber uh, a few, a, a couple of two or three months ago. Uh, you want to go back and check on that. And But now this is engineered siding. You can use it for your trim. You can use it for your soffit. You can use it for your fascia. It's, I mean, it's just win-win. It's such great stuff. And it's it literally will last decades, kind of like the cypress, but really cheaper than your cypress. And really engineered, so it's crazy enough. I know you're going to scratch your head and say, well, what is this engineered wood? Well, basically... It's just like the other engineered wood we have. It's sawdust and wood chips that are combined with glues to put it together. It, you, you don't really have that beautiful wood grain look that you actually don't even have a wood grain look necessarily. You know, it's got its own kind of composite look. But you paint it. You want that clapboard look. You like that, you know, that uh, the Boston type kind of home, uh, you know, the different kinds of like that. It's beautiful, long lasting, easy to maintain, but it is also a little heavy too. So, so, you know, when you start getting really lo- long links, which you can get, that's what's great about it. You can get long, long links. So you don't have them splices in your, in your siding, but you're going to have to have some help getting it put up. So you just might have to call the brother-in-law over, be nice, be nice, make him lunch, maybe a beer or two, but hey, you're going to have your buddies or your somebody come over and help you install it, but it's really worth the time. So think about that. And uh, when it's made correctly, you know, it can be incredibly strong. So we have these different types of materials out there that can also be very nice. So think about that. Um, you know, the pros and cons of what you're trying to look for. If you're a naturalist or you're an environmentalist, I think you're going to want the wood type materials. Engineer wood, well, maybe not so much uh, because, it, you know, I think it's a great recyclable material as far as that's how it's designed, it's how it's made. It's not easy to recycle and you do have some foreign compounds in it that you naturally wouldn't have in your, well, your fur, your cypress, some of the other. Now, when we first started putting vinyl siding up, and it was a transference for me, we was doing vinyl. First, we was doing aluminum. Then we moved over to steel, which steel is still out there, and then vinyl. And we, honestly, us guys in the field, we just laughed our rear ends off. We thought this was funny. You pick a piece of vinyl siding up and it just hangs. It just flops. And when you hang it, now, that's I'm not going to get into the installations of all the different materials, but vinyl siding, if there's ever one to be called hanging siding, vinyl is that. We call hanging all, all siding to be hung, but why I say that is because you do not want that vinyl siding nailed tight. It has to move. And it has that's why it overlaps it's like over three quarters to an inch because it has to move back and forth. It was the different weather fluctuations. If you get it too tight, you'll hey now that I say it, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see that it it warps really bad, you know, and, and so them are some of the bad parts of it. And around it started around the fifties, uh vinyl siding, and it was really it was pretty poor material, actually, you know, junk. You know, uh, in my opinion, initially, not the newer stuff, but the original. And, uh, but it has come a long ways and uh, since then. And one of the great things we like about vinyl siding, and yeah, vinyl siding, it's just like all your other vinyl products. And we talked about the vinyl windows and the vinyl other things. It's a poly a poly vinyl chloride, and it's a you now this new stuff. It's really a durable plastic material. And what we like about it is that out of your, if I may use artificial type siding materials. Uh, where wood would be your natural is that on our artificial this color goes all the way through so if it gets scratched or anything like that then it can be it, it, it you can't really tell so that's a great thing about it because uh, that if that ever happens it does take somebody knowing how to hang it 
But it is, you know, you really kind of read your instructions. Check us out on our some of our YouTube videos. We have some information on it. We're going to be giving some classes here in the near future on installation of, of, of different types of siding. But you want to hang it. You don't want to nail it loose and you want it to move. And it's really, if you, if you just do a little research, do-it-yourselfers can easily hang it. And you can hang a whole house by yourself. It's lightweight. It kind of flops a little bit, you know, when you hang it. There was a phase there in the 70s going into the 80s, a little bit in the 90s, where everybody was replacing all their siding or they was going over their existing wood siding with vinyl. And I mean, it's just that it's that durable that you can easily do that with it. And, and it's and, and do it yourselfers can do it. But I think that if you, unless you're really kind of handy, you should hire a professional to make sure that it's being done right. Now, it's very inexpensive now. It's easy to get anywhere. And, um, you know, it, like I said, it's simple to install if you kind of know what you, you kind of read the instructions. Some of the things that you can do with it is that you can go over your home with it. Now, it does have some problems that I, uh, we're, we're going to get into some of them. But some of the pros that you have with it, we'll do the pros first. Then we'll kind of go into the ugly um, of it. But vinyl siding never needs painted. So they say. Well, that's their advertising. Honestly, it does fade. We saw it. We've all seen it out here. But they do have paint now that can go over vinyl siding. But you have to get the specific type paint. Now, don't worry about it. It's not, you know, it's mostly on your darker colors that you're going to have your fading issues. Uh, and it's going to be mostly on the sides that get the most sun. But the problem with that is, is it's on them sides that when you try to replace it with new siding, you're going to have a, a pretty shiny stuff and then you're going to have the faded stuff. So it does kind of have that as a drawback, but the color goes all the way through and let, and try to, so I know I say you stay away from the darker colors, but the darker colors, well, which is, hey, here's some pro, here's a pro and con here. So I, I put a beautiful vinyl wood grain siding on my home. I got the upper upgrade vinyl siding. It's a heavier stuff. Now you can get the builder's grade, which is really, really cheap, thin stuff. You can get the middle grade, which you, which you, a lot of your installers will actually be putting on uh, out there, your companies. Uh, but then you can also get what your upper end remodeling companies will be actually pushing for your heavier gauge material. Now your heavier gauge material, it's uh, you know, it, it doesn't have the same problems, but I I put down the uh, the beautiful hard or the wood look on mine. You got the different colors of wood, and I did it because I have it in the country. I wanted it to look that way, but also here, you notice it on your darker colors of your vinyl. It doesn't show the mold. Hear that? Doesn't show the mold. The lighter colors, you'll see mold grow in that all over. Well, because vinyl is a petroleum-based product, it has a tendency to get mold growing on it. But it's not really growing on it. It's growing in it. So when you power wash it, which you can, which I recommend, you keep your house power washed and clean, just like you wash your car, and you get mold growing on your vinyl, yes, you're going to have to kind of stay on that section more because it's never going to go away. It's literally in the material. Uh, mold actually grows in your wood products too. So it's not like it's a, it's a natural product it, or, and it will grow inside of it too. But on vinyl, it's a, we have a lot of more issues with it. And your lighter colors will show that more uh, than your darker colors. Um, also, well, let's look at some of the other things. Well, yeah, we said it was cheaper. That's probably why the majority of our home builders and remodelers use it. Definitely why so many remod people put, we, we hung it over existing homes because it was the cheapest option for your home. Some of the cons that I find with it is that it chalks. What do I mean by chalking? If you rub your hand over it after it's been over, oh, you have it for a few years and you rub your hand, the color will come off and you'll have that on your hand. You'll see it's called chalking. 
Another thing that we see a lot of problems with it is rocks and hail, storm damage. You know, this is, is a big problem with it is that uh, it breaks easy. So, you know, you might want to think about the heavier gauge. The colder it is, the more it is brittle. Also, the colder it Okay, here's a good tip from an old boy, uh, an old man who hung miles of this stuff. Used to be I would used to hang siding whenever I could because I needed to feed the family. So if I had a job and it was uh, five degrees above zero, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, I would hang it. I'd hang it because I knew I had to work. And but I found in a short time I was getting tons of callbacks on it because when you hang it in that cold weather, you're not getting a you cannot cannot get a quality installation job you it just not happening so if your guys are hanging it and uh, you, any of you folks are out there hanging it in the winter time when it's really cold 20 degrees or less just know you're going to have callbacks make sure if you're hiring a company and they tell you oh no it's just fine i do it all the time well then make sure they got a good warranty and they actually got a warranty system that'll back it up because you their, their butts will be back out there when it reaches 100 degrees so i just got to where we just literally it was cheaper for me not to go to work than it was and, and hang it later after i discovered this than it would be to try to put it up when it was cold because of the major callbacks also on our post our corner posts and such uh, you know they're harder to replace if they get broke you know with rocks or whatnot hail now when our hail hits it that damages in our you know the the field we call it you know out there in the wall section and there is a little zip tool that costs like 10 bucks it's real easy to rehang you know take it off and reinstall a new piece but remember what i just said earlier Remember when I said how it to have you put a new piece on, how it has a different color if it's on one of them walls? Well, that's one of the d- disadvantages of that. Also, it definitely is not keeping the water from getting underneath the siding. So, what you it has a moisture issue problems, vinyl does. A lot of your installers, and we still see some guys out there doing that, what they'll do is they'll put foam board backing behind our old vinyl, our, our vinyl siding. Well, moisture that's coming out of your home, which you you know, which happens, you want you know, your house has to breathe. Well, then it gets trapped in between that foam and the vinyl, and but it's great to keep in the water from coming in the home, but it doesn't let the house breathe. Your homes have to breathe. We talked a little bit about that with the, in the other show about the house wraps and things. So you want to don't, I, I understand why we use it, the foam. You're trying to give it some rigidity because it is such a weak material. You're trying to give it some strength, but you know, you, you, you kind of get to weigh the pros and cons way where you're living at. You know, if you've got the moisture issues, humidity issues and things kind of take in, in consideration where you live at, uh, whether or not it's something that's going to work good for you. Um, now, if you've got new construction, we use house wrap, like, well, I'm going to use a, you know, house wrapping material. There's different kinds of sheathing out there, which we talked about. I'm going to use a Tyvek. I'm going to throw it out there. They're not sponsoring the show, so I'm not sponsoring their material, uh, though I do like it. It's a good material, but a lot of our house wraps great material. So that will keep, that'll allow your house to breathe. Your, you get a better quality vinyl siding. I believe your problem's solved. You know something else? One last picking on vinyl. Oh, excited. <laughs> and I know some of you guys out there, some of my old friends out there are laughing. They're, I know you guys are laughing right now because we all have laughed about this siding for over the years. But one of the things that we see is you got, I don't know how to tell folks this. You can't be cooking your barbecue by your, by your siding, your vinyl siding. It will warp it. Okay, I'm going to tell on my wife. Ramona, you, I know you're going to be mad at me, but I'm going to snitch you out right here. She's power washing. Remember we talked about power washing? So she's out there power washing. The siding, great thing to do. I'm glad she was doing it, and I didn't have to do it. But I said, you got to make sure that muffler isn't over there close by that siding. How to warp that siding. Well, bad gummit, man. There you go. That siding's all warped up. She just found another job for me. So... 
Keep the all the heat away from the side of it because it warps easy. And you know, we don't need another honeydew job around the house, right? We we got to go fishing, hunting, good fun stuff. Maybe go with the car races, not play place and sighting. But at least it's pretty much maintenance free. So it's, I love it. So think about that. Uh, last, you know, vinyl siding lasts. You know, I, you know, they're telling us that there's some lifetime warranties out there. Don't quite know what lifetime means in their book. But, you know, you can easily get 30, 40 years out of a good quality vinyl siding. Your cheaper siding, it's going to get brittle and break more quickly. So think about just spending a little extra money and get the better stuff. And, uh, and, and, and when you do power wash it, not only think about the muffler burning it and getting heated, but putting water in behind it. It's just not water resistant like that. The material is, it just doesn't protect your house that way. So when you're power washing, be careful. One last thing about vinyl siding. Even though you do got some really beautiful patterns out there, some gorgeous different shiplap, and you got different designs of clapboard, you know, it's tons of that. But vinyl siding can lower, depending on where you're at, can lower the value of your home. So you're not adding, you know, you might be making it maintenance free, but you're not adding value to your home by using it. So think about that. Now that's in specific neighborhoods where everybody's using it. Well, you know, that's a different, a little bit different animal. Uh, and, uh, but think about that. Also vinyl siding. Well, people do complain about this. Vinyl siding manufacturing is really bad for the environment. So if you're really into green building, think about that because, you know, naturally, you know, it's manufacturing processes produce greenhouse gases, you know, like nitrogen oxide and carcinogens, including dioxin. So in, in the Midwest, we have a little bit of issues with dioxin. So think about that. Now, it also has a gassing. So when it's when it's being put up, but don't worry about the gassing after it's put up. It's fine. But that's during the process of building it or making it and also vinyl dust when you're actually sawing it you don't want that getting inside of you it's not healthy for you and uh, you know osha which is really i don't know whose friend it sure ain't anybody out here that actually works for a living but they maintain some strict workplace exposure limits to people with vinyl siding at, the, at their plants that is you know where they make it so think about all of that there um now, like I say, it can be recycled. So, I mean, that's something. But, you know, recycling isn't necessarily, that's another story. But recycling your vinyls or some of your materials can cost more in energy cost than it does save anything. So, you know, think about that too. You know, it's not necessarily a recyclable item to the degree as some of our other materials, such as our wood siding. So you know, that's that, think about that. All right, well, let's jump over here while we still got a little bit of time. And I want to talk about the metal sidings. Ah, oh, I just love the metal sidings. You know, it don't flop in the wind like that other side, like vinyl does. You know, there's got some great different types of it. It's, you know, now we're going to talk about because this radio show does, I know my friends around the country are listening. So we want to talk about, we're going to try to hit the different areas here of your climate. Uh, for us in the Midwest, you know, we're pretty good shape for about any type of our metal siding. But uh, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons. Uh, first thing we want to move into is the steel siding. Steel siding is probably, in my opinion, the superior choice of material. Uh, sadly, when steel is often researched, you know, by people when they're looking at it, they kind of have this steel siding idea that it looks like a commercial building. And it, some of it does. And I got family out there that's put this on their homes and it looks good. You know, they trim it out with some wood and different things to kind of enhance it, make it look beautiful. And I guess that's kind of the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But we also still have uh, steel siding that's out there. We don't see much of it anymore. It's like we used to. We used to have a vinyl. First, when steel first came out, I know this. I, heck, I, like I said, we've hung miles of this stuff. When it first came out, steel siding did not have a vinyl coating. Well, it chalked easy. 
And when that paint, which is just, it's a paint over the, uh, really it's tin and we call it, okay, it's a tin product. We call it steel, so it sounds fancier. You know, that old side, that old siding was. But it, because when that material, that paint wore off of it, well, then you was right down to the raw material. Well, that was a rusting issue. Also, which almost bankrupted some of this vinyl. When they was out there warrantying this stuff would last forever. Well, when they talk about this ex- fabulous ex- paint that they put on, which it was fabulous, you know, and I just love that vinyl coated material. You can get that on aluminum and steel. That keeps it from chalking. It holds the paint longer. But what happened was, is because think about it, it's metal, right? So if you got the wrong substrate behind it, the wrong type of wrap, house wrap, or you're trapping that moisture that we was talking about earlier, well, it was rusting out from the uh, backside out. Well, that just about bankrupt the company because they did not anticipate that. They should have got a good building engineer. Apparently, they're, uh, <clears throat> they're uh, they, and I don't really know what to say about that. We're going to let that one go before I get in trouble for my engineer friends. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was, but so steel siding is a fabulous choice of material. You can get different si- styles out there. You can get a wide range of different colors out there. And, you know, we're going to talk about some of the toughness of it, the versatility of it. You, you know, steel siding is still one is considered is one of the most green options for siding for two main reasons. It can be recycled from old steel and the old steel can be recycled, right? So you got, as you still, you take an old steel junk that, you know, that you got out in the yard and take it down there to the scrap yard. Well, they can turn around and make that siding for you. Or you're going to strip your house because it's old siding and somebody didn't get it taken care of, didn't keep it sealed. Well, then that gives you a little bit of a problem there. So that can be recycled. Think about that. It's also a very low maintenance, uh, which oh, I love low maintenance. I you know, and uh, but you know that means it's less eco- ecologically damaged and supported, and uh, you won't need to repaint it or reseal it. So they say. You know, some of the newer stuff is so much better than the older materials. And you're not even going to get some of that older. But I'm the reason, man, I mention it because you're going to see it out there in the field. Oh, it's a excellent for durability. It's for over an overall value. Actually, steel siding is one of the most of the valuable. It does it at the upfront cost aside. Steel siding can last 50 plus years with very little problems or very little care. It's, oh, this is great. It's absolutely resistant to wildlife and insect damage. Also, it's what I also like about it. So if you live in some of these home areas, and I'm, I'm going to go to my friends that are out there in the West Coast my family and friends out there, you've gotten a fire, you know, a lot of forest fires. Well, it's not going to catch a fire. So it's a great for roofs. It's great for siding. It's a fire. Ret- naturally, it's fire retardant also. So it keeps the termites out, keeps the bugs out, uh, fire retardant. So, I mean, it just, a, it, and, and that does literally can add value to your home. Sharp temperature swings. Like here in the Midwest, where we go back and forth, it doesn't cause as much problems. It doesn't move. It just has got a longer shelf life with least amount of work. So you get some great protections. You know, they say it's pretty much ideal for the majority of it in North America. And that's true. And But it's really great in areas that's dry or in drier parts of the Midwest, the Northeast, Southeast. But... One of the things that I find that is a problem with steel siding that we want to talk about is that steel siding in our salt areas or along our ocean fronts where we get them breezes blowing in or we get hurricanes or we get that salt water issues, uh, you do got some problems. It, it, It will rust out and it'll rust out fairly quickly. So it's not, in my opinion, it may be, not necessarily my first choice for that. One last thing, some of the good stuff about it here real quick. It can be easily insulated behind it. It's great for soundproofing. So that's another thing. If you're living along a highway or a roadway or something like that, you can put some foam board insulation type behind it. It can be help insulate and also for soundproofing. Fabulous. So 
uh, think about that. You know, it, like I say, it's not really great in some of our wetter climates, but it works great in our drier climates. And uh, you can get different different systems, different styles for your cost. I want to tell you, throw this out here. Buyer beware with some of the steel sidings out there. Now, there is a great big market out there for seconds, steel siding seconds, same with steel roofing. What does that mean is that it you can get it a heck of a lot cheaper, but the finish isn't as high quality as your first some of your first run. So I'm I myself I it lasts that much longer. It's that much less hassle. I don't mind buying the seconds, but as long as your head's up and you know what you're getting. So steel siding, great option i really do highly recommend it there's some all kinds of neat stuff out there you don't want that steel look if it's that traditional commercial type look add a little bit of wood add a little bit of vinyl you can you know some beautiful redwood or some cedar trim really makes it look good so let's move over here to aluminum siding real quick and aluminum siding so back in my day, when we used to hang a lot of aluminum before, and it was the most popular, remember the Tin Man? You know, that's what they always used to sell, that old <laughs> aluminum siding. Well, we used to call it, this construction guys, we call it beer can siding because they'd make it out of, you know, they, you could make this stuff out of beer cans, you know, recycled beer cans. But that's one of the advantages of it because it can be recyclable. So it's green energy compliant. And... It has as it's we talked about being on that you want that metal look you kind of like that, and you're on the uh, wet coast or the salt areas, the uh, coastline, some of these areas like that where you get that salt water problems or high moisture problems. Aluminum, fabulous. A little, it's more expensive, but it really is great for that type of opportunity. Now, after the war, World War II, we saw a boom in uh, aluminum siding out there. Because we was had all our factories that, that was making it, they needed an industry, so they started making aluminum siding. And honestly, aluminum, when it comes to the metals out there, from my understanding, it's more economical to produce than some of our steel sidings. Now, I know I've heard other arguments that that's not true. But it really does make it, 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 from my reading of it and what I could see, it's more economical to produce than some of our other metals. But just like all material, everything, it's got its positives as well as its negatives when it comes to clad in your home. So we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons real quick. Now, the first thing I would recommend is you don't get the cheap stuff. You know, you did that. You can get that real cheap stuff. It's it's just it dings the slightest little bumping up against it, puts a dent in it. It's that's not really easy to you know replace. That's a drawback. So try to get a better, the thicker material if you can, and if at all possible, try to get the heaviest of it because it's going to it really be worth the extra money. If, you, if you're going to be staying in your home for any length of time and you just don't want the hassles of the others, it's, you know, it's got durable. It's also good for, you know, the wet and cold climates. It's easy to insulate behind. So that's also, you know, it's some really great. It don't rust out. Now, we got some better materials that we used to have for our finished coats. Used to be on our old finished coats that, remember, well, we'd be right down to the old beer can look, the aluminum look, because that paint just chalked right off. Well, we don't really have that so much. We got some really high-quality finishes, some of that vinyl coated that really will help you a ton. When it comes to our metal sidings, aluminum probably is your best bang for your buck. You want to make sure you get the quality. You want to make sure you don't cheap out, you know, but it, 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 it is kind of limited to some of the patterns that you can get uh, because you know, you're not going to get that beautiful wood grain look and such like you would with wood. And you know, but like everything, it's got its good, bad, and ugly to it. And so them are some of the things I want to talk about. But man, on your people in the coastal areas or moisture areas or salt spray, you get that aluminum. Win, win, win. You're just going to, I guarantee you, you're going to be happy with it. Oh, so anyway, there are some of the different things that we have out there that we also want to be looking at for our different types of material. 
Um, aluminum, you know, just a real quick recap, you know, aluminum's recyclable, you know, it's great for the cold weather, it's great for hot weather, it doesn't hold the heat like steel siding does, but you can also get that also that uh, insulation behind it, so that not so big of a problem. It's also fire resistant, so if I'm living in areas that are more, you know, fire prone, we want to talk about that. Um, you know, I understand now, I am not an insurance person, and I recommend, I'm going to make this statement first, uh, I understand from other sources that it actually will add value to your home, a quality aluminum siding. But don't let me do the talking, get a hold of your insurance guy. To check out our radio show with Mike Caples of Farmers Insurance. He did a fabulous radio show with us a while back. Mike Caples is a great guy. Uh, you can check out our show. He'll got his phone number. I've been buddies with him for a long time. Good, honest man. But call him. Check the radio show out first uh, and with Mike and for, with Farmers and hear about the different things that he's talking about. But give him a call and ask him what he feels about it. And uh, so think about that. Let's talk about our fiber cement siding. Ah, oh, that's some great stuff. That cement board. Well, one, we got several brand names. I'm not going to give you any brand names. Get a quality brand name. Get one that's been around. But some of the drawbacks is that our cheaper stuff is getting some major callbacks. I'm getting called out to check on some of these uh, siding problems because uh, of poor fiber cement boards. But actually, so vi it, 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 what it is, is, is it's got, it's a fiber cement which can, with Portland cement, water, sand, and some cellulose fibers. It's all pressed together to make this. I'm going to tell you a real quick story here. So I am old school, which, you know, I mentioned. So before I wanted to put this out there on anybody's house, I wanted to try it. So I used it for my raised bed gardening. I just took some some cedar planks or some siding and I used it for my raised bed. I didn't treat it. It was already primed. I didn't paint it. I didn't do anything. I just stuck it in the ground to see how long it would last. And watering. And I mean, you couldn't get more of a harsher environment than that. Well, it did deteriorate. It did fall apart, but it lasted almost 10 years. Now, I'm not going to say yours will, but mine did. I'm not recommended to use for raised beds, but uh, that kind of gives you an idea of longevity of it. It's, it's uh, I and you can get some really neat looking patterns. It doesn't have that beautiful wood grain look as wood, but it also has got great durability that I know that you'll love. It's sturdy, but my you know, what we're having the biggest problem with it is, is kind of like what we had when we first started having our steel siding, and then vinyl siding. It's my carpenters out there not knowing how to install it. That is what's causing the problems. You, and if you're giving issues, call me, Galloway, Troy, call me Troy Galloway, Galloway Building Services. Uh, and I'll, we can look at it, see if it's been installed incorrectly. Even the manufacturers have changed some of their installation issues and concerns about how they want it hung because of the problems with uh, of hanging it. But I really do like it. It's weather resistance. It holds. It really does a great job of holding its finish. What I also like, you know, you can get some. You have it has to be caulked. You know, and that's a problem with it. Uh, your caulking is, it will wear out, but get a good quality caulking and it lasts for a good long time. It's not really so much a, uh, a do it yourself or kind of a product because it is heavy. You do kind of got to know what it is that you, how to install it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, but it is, it's won't rot. It's definitely termites not going to eat it. It's good for weather resistant. It's good for our harsh environments. Um, it holds, if you do got to repaint it or something, it does hold its finish very well. Uh, you can get it unfinished or you can get some pre-finishes. I recommend to spend a little extra, get the pre-finish. It's going to save you, I think in the long run, it's going to save you money. And it's definitely, it's going to last a good long time. Um, now, 
here's one of the drawbacks to it is for our installers. It's not so much for you folks out there that are living with it, but our installers, yeah, the silicon dust, it literally will get it when they're cutting it. Read, read your instructions when you're hanging it. It gives you a warning right there not to be breathing it. Now, I don't know how in the world you're going to be out there not breathing it. And I don't care about them mask. The mask are not going to, it don't hold If it's not stopping some of these viruses, it sure the heck ain't going to stop some of that silicon dust coming through there. But it doesn't hurt to have the mask on because anything is better than nothing. So think about that when you're installing it, uh, you installers out there. You know, just don't be breathing the dust so much. Make sure you knock the dust off of you when you go into your home or something. And then I got the last one, which I'm, which, uh, which is funny because what I did is I, I this is I did this for my own self. In order for me to talk about this last siding, it's a hardboard siding. Masonite was one of the brands. I actually got a blank piece of paper. Why do I got a blank piece of paper? Because I highly recommend you don't use that crap. Just stay away from your uh, your masonite hardboard siding. It's just pressed paper, basically, with a bunch of glue. Uh, installation issues we have. I mean, it was, it, masonites, they barely made it through the lawsuits. I don't think they have any class action suits left out there. I think it's all expired. Just stay away from that. Just know it's junk. Just like this, this blank piece of paper. We don't have dose. Don't use it. Well, folks, thank you for listening to About the House. Thank you for taking your time. I hope that it's been educational for you, folks. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. Like I said, if you have questions, give me a call. My cell phone number, 310. Oh, don't you say nothing to nobody. That's just between us if you listen to the show. But my personal cell phone number, if you want to reach me, is that 314 314- Five two zero six six five five, but give us a call at the office. Set up a job or a schedule if you want us to come out and take a look at it, your job. Making sure it's being done right. It's important that it is. Making sure maybe you got some manufacturer issues that you're kind of worried. Oh, do I got a bad? Is this some of that bad stuff you Detroit was talking about? Give us a call. I'll come out there take a look at it for you. Love to help you in any way. You mentioned this show. We will definitely give you a discount. I will personally come out there if you call me. So give us a call. Troy Galloway. I am the owner of Galloway Building Services, your premier building inspection company. We'd love to be a service to you. Thanks, folks. And I'm going to give a shout out to my producer here, Joey. I'm throwing this out here because this guy really does a great job of taking care of us in our radio show. He's been doing this now for almost, what, two years now for us. And uh, I could not be more excited. I could not brag on him more. Bye, folks. Have a great day. Appreciate it. Sponsored by Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services, your top choice for professional home inspections in the St. Louis area. GallowayBuildingServices.com. Bye-bye.